interesting to see if the length of time placed in sucrose solution would change the percentage loss in mass and the texture of strawberries. As you know, sucrose solution will have a lower water potential than inside the strawberry, so you do expect water to move out of the strawberry down a water potential gradient by osmosis. You'd also expect, because water has mass, for the strawberry to lose mass, but also what would happen to the texture. In an osmosis investigation, if you're independent variables at length of time, there are also lots of things that you need to keep constant, so lots of control variables, and these are highlighted in blue. So each slice needs to be 10 millimeters thick. And this allows comparison because the thickness of the slice would affect that the the distance that the water has to travel by osmosis, so it would affect how quickly it loses water. It would also affect the surface area of the strawberries, so again this affects the speed, the rate of um, osmosis. The sucrose solution needs to be the same concentration that it's placed in because this affects the water potential, so this would affect the rate of osmosis. So if there's a higher concentration used, then this would mean that more water would move out at a faster rate because there's a greater water potential gradient. So the concentration has to remain constant because this affects the rate of osmosis. Again, another thing that's important is the temperature because temperature affects the kinetic energy of the molecules. So if you've got a high temperature, it would cause a faster rate of osmosis. So you have to have the te same temperature to allow comparison. And the other thing that's important is blotting dry the tomatoes, not the tomatoes, the strawberries uh, after each experiment to remove all of the water. And because this is to due to the strawberries could have different amounts of water on the outside of them and water has mass. So again, this allows comparison. If you're going to describe the results in a table, I find it easier to do a sketch graph. So in blue, we've got a sketch graph of over time, what happens to the percentage loss in mass. You can see you've got a rise, um, and it's sort of a slight curve. Um, so a steep rise to start off with for the first hour, and then over time, the difference gets less and less. With the texture, as time goes on, you have a, a, a steep decrease for the first hour, and then it levels off from two hours onwards. So after two hours, it levels off and remains at 0.7 texture. One of the questions was why did they uh, include a result of not applicable? So it's because there's not been enough time for osmosis to occur. This is the initial mass so it's not had it lost any mass because it's the initial mass you just put the strawberry in the solution. So if you're given this data how could you predict the time taken for the strawberry to fully dehydrate? So what we mean is all the water has been lost by the strawberry and gone into the sucrose solution. So what you could do is you could, as you can see there's a curve, so you could uh, plot a graph, so plot your points with time on the x, percentage loss in mass on the y, plot your points and do a curve of best fit, and you can see you get this sort of shape, but that doesn't show you where all the water's been lost. So then in red, you could extrapolate the curve, so extrapolate, extrapolate the curve until it levels off, and the time at which it levels off would be the time that all the water has been lost from the strawberry so it's not going to lose any more mass. On the next set of, uh, on the next graph, the next resource, the, the data doesn't really match the trend that you'd expect because the ones soaked in salt solution, you'd expect them to lose more mass because there's a lower water potential outside uh, the cells and inside. So we're, we're going to bypass that. But this resource does cover some important practical skills questions to do with osmosis. So what do we notice as we go through? So first of all, if you're reading, if you see anything to do with salt or sugar solution, it's probably going to have something to do with osmosis because you know that salt or sugar solution is going to have a lower water potential than whatever you put inside it, in this case the, the turkey meat. Another thing we can see with the three um, investigations so B is the one that we're, seeing, we're wanting to see if that has an effect. But we need to compare it to two things. So we've got to have two controls. You've got to have one that's untreated. So this will prove the effect is not due to the soaking, to the brining process. And we need the second control um, to show that it wasn't water within the brine, that it was the salt within the brine um, that caused the effect. The last question in your booklet 
says about the why is it an advantage to cook until the centre reaches 65 degrees? Well, it gives you a quantita quantitative measurement of cooking. It's not subjective at all. Um, so you, you don't touch the meat to see if it squishes. Uh, you don't look at it to see if you think it's the right colour. So it's a quantitative measurement of cooking, so it's consistent. So it's repeatable. And it allows you to see the extent uh, at which the meat is cooked. And if you can see, a piece of turkey from my rook sketches and not all the same thickness, not all the same size. So it gives you a way that's re repeatable if the pieces of meat are different sizes. Question seven was why is a uh, percentage uh, of the original mass? Why is that a good unit to do? Again, it allows comparison because the initial masses of meat could have been different. And you can see from these two examples, this one would have weighed more than the other. So you can't just have mass, see the percentage of that which allows comparison.